bad. Here's 10 reasons why Sally Morgan is a bad psychic. Fuck, it's going on. 10. Princess Diana's psychic. Sally Morgan did several readings for Princess Diana and several others for her sister. And so has become known as Princess Diana's psychic. She's used that relationship, which was very limited, to bolster her career. She's even claimed that she predicted a number of the conditions in her life, including the way in which she died. So out of a series of long readings, with lots of information given across, Sally suggests that there's going to be a car crash and that the Queen was going to die. She thought it was going to be the Queen, apparently. So allegedly, these readings, she mentioned on one occasion, she saw a body being pulled from a black car and she thought it might be the Queen, not Princess Diana. And of course, remembering that detail, or alleged detail, makes it seem to be mildly convincing. However, it only really fits, and is remembered to fit, because of people looking back to these readings that happened in the past. And was there good information given in what could have been hours of information, considering Princess Diana had several readings, if they were only half an hour readings, and the best information was a few vagaries about a crash and a death, which have then been put together since actual events happened. Is that really evidential? What the fuck is going on? 9. Censorship. Many of the critics of Sally Morgan have been threatened with lawsuits, and even people uploading videos where they point out a few basic facts end up with their video being taken down by an organisation called Web Sheriff. In effect, Sally Morgan was censoring the web from critique. Some blogs were shut down, some websites affected, and YouTube videos simply pointing out where she did indeed use an earpiece were basically taken down. Naturally, people like myself counterclaimed and didn't end up being sued. Why was that? Surely if Web Sheriff, and indeed Sally Morgan working through them, had an actual case against my work and the work of others, we would have been in court and sued for every single penny if they had a case. The fact they had no case, and the footage used was covered by fair use, shows that they were simply using censorship as a tool. What the fuck? 8. Psychic Investigator In the past, Sally Morgan has claimed to work with police on investigations. She even claimed it on her website up until five years ago, when she removed it and never mentioned it again. This kind of tactic is quite common where a person boasts their abilities or alleged abilities and activities, make out they're more than they actually are, and when they get caught out they simply remove the information from their website and hope that no one notices that they're covering their backside. Oh my god. 7. Talking to the living. In 2014, at a theatre in Middlesbrough, Sally Morgan was doing one of her favourite acts, doing readings on photos. The idea is that you take a photo along of a deceased relative and she attempts to create a connection to that relative. However, on this occasion, a woman handed in a photo of herself, perhaps not understanding the premise that you meant to hand in a photo of a deceased relative. So Sally Morgan did a reading as if she was communicating with a person in the afterlife. Then the woman told her it was actually a picture of herself, not of a deceased relative. Due to this mistake, the event was largely disrupted by laughter and confusion. One pathetic loser. Six, unhappy fans. There are numerous people who've gone to go and see Sally Morgan and not been impressed. They've not seen a quality of work that truly exhibits a psychic or spiritual ability of any kind. According to some people, she's simply not very good, doesn't offer good readings, or seems to offer a lot of random information. The kind of fans who've said this 
have ranged from people who like TV shows about psychics to more matured spiritualists. Uh oh, retard alert! Five, photos. I mentioned photo readings, and Sally Morgan seems to have a speciality for photo readings. Very often with her shows, she'll invite some of the audience to give photos, put them into this bowl. She'll select at random a couple of photos and do readings. So on one well-known occasion, she picked out a photo and started talking about a man, thinking the photo showed a man, when in fact it was an old woman. She had to be told by the audience that it was in fact an old woman. But she carried on doing the reading and eventually made it fit. So she changed a few things, including changing the name Bernard, which she got when she thought the photo was of a man, to Barn, because apparently the women she was reading for had stables. And she said, does she get stuff confused or did she get stuff confused? And they said yes, so they accepted Barn, even though Barn was not applicable, and originally it was Bernard. And to fix the idea of it being a man, that she made a mistake initially, she said after looking at the picture some more, close up, that she wanted to shave her, because the old woman had a stubbly face. How do you get a stubbly face like that? Because of shaving. She probably had a hairy face due to medication, or simply due to her chemical balances in old age. And so she said that was why she thought it was a man. Of course! Four. Faker stress. Sally Morgan claimed that she was suicidal due to the incredible stress of being called a faker. So she played for this sympathy while suing several major papers and she got a massive payout from the Daily Mail. She didn't get the money because she proved that she had genuine psychic ability. She got the money because of detriment to her character and possible loss of earnings. By claiming it as loss of earnings, she managed to get a massive payout. That was it. It had nothing to do with the allegations actually within the article itself, as much as the potential effect upon her career. What matters is our plan. Three, on the spot. When Sally Morgan's been put on the spot, when she's been asked to provide evidence, right here, right now, she can't seem to provide anything of any real great value. A good example of this is on a radio show where Richard Bacon is basically interviewing Sally Morgan. And to test Sally Morgan, Richard Bacon's mum comes onto the show. So across the phone and the radio waves, Sally Morgan is put on the spot and she fails completely. All she seems to offer is bad cold reading that doesn't work. And this low quality cold reading seems to match with what people claim she's like in theatres. But of course it's a lot easier in a theatre. We have hundreds or perhaps thousands of people who are willing to accept a message that might not be perfect. You went full return, man. Two, abusive. Outside of a venue, on a public street, a sceptic was handing out leaflets, pointing out how cold reading can work. He spoke to Sally Morgan's husband and son-in-law, and they were highly threatening, abusive, they were homophobic, even racist at one point. They threatened to beat him up, they threatened to call the police, they threatened to sue him, they claimed they had all of his information, and because it was filmed, Sally Morgan was forced to actually fire her husband and son-in-law as her personal staff. It gave her some very bad publicity because of the language they were using and the threats they were making. Never go for return. One, earpiece. When revelations about Sally Morgan potentially using an earpiece came out, she made a statement saying that she did not use an earpiece. People in a theatre in Dublin said they had heard a person talking from behind the scenes in a theatre, saying precisely what she said, but a few seconds earlier. It seemed to be the case that she was being fed information by someone behind the scenes. Despite claiming she does not have an earpiece, does not use and has not used an earpiece, she has been seen to actually wear 
an earpiece. The images of her coming off stage and taking off her earpiece in full view of the camera are from a biographical documentary. Many newspapers ran stories about it, stories that Sally Morgan could not refute. However, she sued on other grounds. So rather than suing over the question of her being a scam artist, a fraud, a fake psychic, she claimed it caused mental and emotional stress, that it was detriment of character, and was damaging her earnings. So she hasn't refuted the point that she was using a earpiece to hear information supplied about the audience. Although to be entirely fair, it seems like the vast majority of her readings are simply cold readings. You're 